guys welcome back to my channel my name is Isata and today's video I am going to be sharing with you guys the stats that got me into college Originally my plan for this college series was that I was going to post my reaction video which I already have done and then right after a week later I was going to post my reveal of where I'm going to college because I already know where I'm going but I just didn't plan well enough and I ordered my crew neck of the school that I'm going to like a week ago like after they all came out I just didn't account for shipping especially with the current world state shipping is super slow right now so I've just been getting so many comments on my college decisions video of you guys really wanting to see my stats asking if I'm gonna do a stats video and I knew that I wouldn't be able to get to my reveal for a while so I figured let's just do my stats video in the meantime thank you to everyone who watched my reacting to my college decisions video and left so many so many comments you guys are so sweet thank you for taking the time to go in comment something nice say congratulations and for those of you that got into your school congratulations for getting into all the schools that you're going to you guys are going to some amazing 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 schools and I know that you guys are all going to end up loving where you go comment down below what class you guys are if you guys are juniors sophomores seniors if you're literally a freshman and you're just not prepared comment that down below because I'm curious to know what grade you guys are in so yeah today's video I'm going to be going over a brief look into my stats I'm not going to be giving exact numbers of everything but I'm going to be giving ranges and then I'm going to be talking about all the things that I put into my application and I'm going to be reflecting on the entire application process giving a little bit of advice I'm kind of talking about what were the strong points and the weak points in my application. Uh, the only d disclaimer that I have before we get started is to take this video with a grain of salt. I've seen so many stats videos. I know especially when I was a junior, like I was watching stats videos like crazy and I'd be like, oh, this is the stats that this person got and they got into these schools. So that means I'm going to maybe get into these schools. So I would just stay away from that because honestly, as I said in my college decisions video um, that I posted, college is literally a lottery. I've seen people with way lower and higher stats get into schools I got into and not get into schools that I've got into so you really at a certain point you can't really be certain where you're gonna get into based on your stats and your essays there's just so many factors in the entire application process the first thing that I did want to say I forgot to mention this in my reacting to my college decision video is that I never said what major I applied to so across the board I applied to 11 schools and for every single school I applied under the major political science and I know some schools School, your major does matter some schools it doesn't for the UC schools they say it doesn't I really feel like it definitely does just from my experience because I saw other people with more competitive majors like biology and like neuroscience and engineering not in get into some of the schools or get like the rejected instead of waitlisted and they had higher stats I feel like there's so many factors that go into it and I know the schools that it specifically does matter at is that the Cal State they even say that they accept based on major so that an important thing to think about and a lot of private schools I believe so just keep in mind that your major does I feel like at a certain base level definitely matter even when you're looking at majors like engineering and like biology and stuff they want you to take subject tests and as you'll see in a second I didn't take a single subject test so applications will kind of look differently and requirements will definitely look differently for different majors I guess we'll go ahead and get started with the classes that I took in high school I took a total of eight AP classes over the span of high school I took one my sophomore year I took three my junior year and then I took four my senior year so eight AP classes in total across the board I never got a five so far I haven't taken my senior AP exams yet sophomore and junior year I got all threes and fours so never got a five there and then I took four honors classes over the span of high school I took one my freshman year and then I took uh, three my sophomore year I'm just gonna go through each grade and just like go through all the classes that I took I'm doing this all off the top of my head I should have prepared notes beforehand but I was too lazy to do that and I last minute decided to film this video um, so my freshman year I took all regular classes except for one honors class so I took PE I took Spanish 2 because I took Spanish 1 in eighth grade I took biology where you go I took algebra 1 uh, honors English 1 that was my only honors class and I took a semester my school had this weird graduation requirement where one of the semesters you have to take health and one of the, one of the semesters you have to take CCP that was my freshman year year class overall I think from what I remember my freshman year I got straight A so freshman year was pretty easy where you go 
know honestly like i went into it with not too high expectations because everyone says your freshman year is super easy so i did pretty well there and then the summer after my freshman year i decided to take geometry over the summer to um advance in math a little bit the nine month course was smashed into like six weeks and that was crazy six weeks of my life it was online and i was traveling at some point i was annoyed though because i had like a 95 the entire time and then the final was like 40 percent of our grade and i and it was only 25 questions too so i think i got a b on the final and then it dropped my grade from like a 95 to an 87 i got a b plus in the class and what was really annoying is they applied that to i think my sophomore year gpa so then that tanked my first semester sophomore year gpa whatever it's over with going into my sophomore year i took three honors classes and one ap class so i took badminton as my pe because my high school has two years of a pe requirement and then i took spanish three and then my three honors classes were honors chemistry honors english two and um honors algebra two trigonometry which that class was the hardest class I took in high school by far. Like that was like my downfall. I'm not really good at math. I'm actually really, I wouldn't say I'm bad at math, but I'm just like average at math. And I have a very difficult time with math if the class is sped up. So especially since I took geometry over the summer and I didn't really grasp too much for it, I really just should have taken regular algebra too. The reason why that class was kind of my downfall, I feel like, is because the first semester I got a B minus, but then second semester I got my one and only C on my transcript. And that was so, I was so heartbroken after that. I did so bad on the final and ended up getting a C in the class. And that really just tanked my GPA for sophomore year. So I took Honors Algebra 2 trig and then the one AP class that I took was AP European History That was like my favorite class that I've ever taken in high school. Love that class to death Overall, I got A's and B's. Obviously, I got that one C second semester and then I think I got a B in chemistry Junior year. This year, um, I actually signed up for four APs But then I ended up dropping one within six weeks of school Originally, I was signed up for AP Biology, AP Language and Composition, English Language and Composition, AP US History, and AP Spanish 4 as my four APs but then within six weeks I dropped AP biology and I made a whole video on it because I failed the first test and it was just like a lot and I regret well yeah I regret taking the class because I begged my counselor to let me drop into like another science like AP environmental science or forensics or literally anything physics like I just needed to drop into a science because I wanted four years of science but my counselor basically told me that I couldn't drop into a science because I it was like the first two weeks of school I dropped out and she was like no you can't so I ended up getting a free period and I only did three years of science which is definitely something that I think could have been something that really contributed to bringing my application down now that I look back at it three APs and then I did yearbook and I did regular pre-calculus and my junior year I actually did pretty well I would say I think first semester I got I might have gotten one or two B's first semester but second semester I think I only got one B and it was literally in my Lang class I had an 89% but she rounded case by case and she literally wouldn't round my 89 I was so annoyed because I was literally like I could have had a 4.0 that semester so yeah that, that overall junior year was kind of a breeze for me in terms of like school like academics besides like the SAT and ACT because my workload wasn't too bad so that was kind of a chill year especially since I had a free period then senior year I really tried to bulk up more on the APs as much as possible because I knew at that point I, I had only taken four APs and I obviously didn't take a science my junior year so I took seven classes this year and literally up until now it was was literally the bane of my existence and I regretted taking seven AP or seven classes just because it's a lot like I have to take a zero period and it was my first time taking a zero period just don't recommend it. Took four AP classes. This year I'm enrolled in AP government and politics, AP psychology, AP English literature, and AP Spanish literature. So got to my fifth year of Spanish and then I had to take a science. I, I really needed to take a science because I knew the UCs recommend three years. They require two, but they recommend three. So I took forensics, took it easy, low key regret it because I'm bored out of my mind in that class. And then I did student government this year. Oh, and I'm in regular calculus, which is not too bad actually. So that puts me at seven classes and I think last semester I got one B, literally one B. Like I did pretty well junior and senior year. So overall, um, I don't know exactly my GPA, but it's above a 4.0. So overall I did like pretty decent. My unweighted GPA is like high key trash, but my weighted GPA is like, like average, honestly, because I know the UCs have a different weighting system. They only give you up to where you go. Four semesters of AP, like the grade boost thing 
thing and it's like four semesters within your sophomore and junior year your weighted UC GPA will be different from your weighted school GPA so my weighted school GPA was definitely higher than my UC GPA but I guess it all scales at the end of the day at the end of the day I was pretty average when it came to like my grades in my school I go to a pretty competitive high school people at my school literally have like 4.7 4.8 4.9 GPAs it's actually crazy like I think a couple years back like half the class graduated in white which means half the class like graduated with a, over a 4.0 so I'm I think my decile rank is about the top 20% I'm not the top 10% uh, I know UCs do look at your decile rank and they usually take the top 10 people that are the top 10% and they will accept them early or accept them into their honors program so I'm just in the top 20% I've honestly consider myself like average when it comes to like how smart I am and like my grades or whatever but yeah at the end of the day when it comes to like my grades and all of that stuff I just like always tried to put in as much effort as possible and tried my best over the years and tried taking harder classes in the classes that I enjoyed or subjects that interested me the most so that's it for grade didn't take any classes at my community college or anything nothing super crazy my school doesn't have dual enrollment so now on to the SAT and the ACT literally the hardest part of my entire application was the SAT and ACT literally I struggled with it so much like it was just so rough anyone who knows me in life knows that I struggled with this I'm just not the I'm really not a good test taker in general and so especially like time tests and doing things under pressure I'm really really bad at I struggled with this a lot my biggest tip for you guys that are going into this process make sure you start early and make sure you figure out really early on which test you like now I started literally the summer before junior year summer, yeah the summer before junior year I went to Africa then I came back and I think we had like two weeks or something a couple weeks maybe and I immediately uh, enrolled in this like SAT ACT review class thing that we had in our local area it was super casual I think it was like total like 30 hours and they went over the SAT and the ACT over like a spread out of weeks so I liked that class because I got a little bit of a feel of the SAT and the ACT going into my junior year I took the September SAT no the October SAT and the September ACT and I did bad the first time I took it I got it in the 1100 range it was so so bad and then in my on my ACT I got like in the 20s no bueno so immediately I was like okay well this is not good then what I did was I kind of was like okay let me come to a decision of like which I I want to take so I was like oh I want to start studying like heavily for my ACT and I want to do the ACT and my reasoning was so bad because I was like my scores ended up being equal so I couldn't even be like oh like I did better on this one test than the other but I felt like I struggled the most with the ACT so in my head I was like if I have a low score that means I just need to work harder to compensate I don't know how to explain it and I was like I can just learn the science section the ACT is a little bit faster than the SAT so I was like I just need to like learn the timing and stuff and big 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 mistake because I spent so much time like you guys don't even know like I think if you watch my go back and watch my junior year vlogs like on the weekends I was going and studying with friends at coffee shops literally I got the red ACT book and I was taking practice tests every weekend I was going back to that um, test prep center and taking like practice tests and my score would just go up and down like fluctuate it would go up like max by like three points which yeah three points is a lot on the ACT but like it was still like far from what I needed it to be so I ended up taking the ACT two more times I took it in uh, wait no I took it one more time I took it in um, the springtime I took the April ACT and my score went up by one point so at that point I was like nah the ACT is not for me this was like April of my junior year and my parents were like what are you doing I used to tell you, you need to figure out your life like you need to be applying to colleges a lot of people had already had their SAT and ACT score out of the way and I was low-key freaking out because I still did not have my SAT or my ACT and it made it really hard to like trying to figure out colleges because I had a solid GPA but like my test score was like not there like I didn't have like a, a, a test score that I was okay with like even okay with so I was like freaking out and then my I basically sat down with my parents and I was like okay I'm gonna switch back to the SAT and my parents were like hey I think the SAT is better because they had seen how much I like struggled with the ACT and like it just wasn't working out for a multitude of reasons so my parents basically found out about this like boot camp 
the famous boot camp. If you guys watched like my vlogs over the summer, you know about this boot camp because it took up my summer. We had this like SAT boot camp thing and it would basically be 40 hours a week. I would have to go there like five hours a day and it was basically like summer school and they would help me with like my SAT stuff. It was really, really expensive too. To this day, I feel really bad because I went to the SAT camp and they're like, they promised like about on average like 100 to 200 point improvement and I was like, okay, this is perfect. Perfect. like it'll give me like I'll be in a good range like 200 points that would put me in the 1300 range I really did want a 1400 at one point but like realistically I was like I just want to make like 1300 range so I went to this boot camp over the summer did it literally went there Monday through Friday 9 to 1 every single day stayed extra hours to do extra work had homework on top of that then I started working and I was also trying to juggle YouTube it was just such a rough summer like that entire summer we didn't travel anywhere we didn't do anything we didn't go anywhere because I I had to be here over the summer for those like eight weeks to do the boot camp and by the end of the boot camp I had raised my score by 200 point from my actual SAT but like only 100 points from when I had started the camp because what happened was um, when I started the camp my score my SAT score did go up a little bit and I thought it was because I was studying so much for my ACT but then by the end of the camp it only went up by just like by a little the thing is by the end of the camp i was like in the 1300 range i was scoring like low 1300s and i was like okay like this is kind of decent because at the end of the day i wanted to go to like uci maybe shoot my shot and try for uc santa barbara and like stuff like that and obviously the other schools were like dream schools but i was like like a 13 something is like pretty decent for getting into ucs and i had seen like a lot of people's stats videos and i'd seen people get into ucs with like 13 in the 1300 range a month goes by and and I take my SAT in August and I score in the 1200 range and I was like that was the worst point ever in this entire process because I was like working on my UC applications I was like feeling good like working on my essay and I score in the 1200 range and I'm like how how because literally like my score dipped lower than like I was scoring at this like center I started to freak out I was like oh my gosh I literally quit my job for an entire month from like the span of like August to October yeah October was the next SAT and all throughout September and most of October I just did stop working completely and on the weekends like I would do Khan Academy and I would like take practice tests here and there and then October comes around and I only raise my score by another 10 points so at that point, I kind of had to suck it up because it was October. I knew UCs were due in November and I really just kind of had to go with it. So the SAT score I submitted was in the 1200 range and it definitely was not my proudest score. I think that was number one, the worst part of my application as a whole was my SAT score. And I think that was a big reason why I got rejected and waitlisted at so many schools is really because of my SAT score. But it made it really difficult as me applying and trying to choose schools because I felt like, like my GPA was like pretty decent like it was I obviously had over a 4.0 but then my SAT score was so low in comparison so it didn't really line up um so that was the most difficult part aspect of the entire situation in like applying to colleges and stuff but yeah I kind of had to suck it up and at that point I just kind of focused and put all my energy into the rest of my application so that was that was my essays and my extracurriculars and all of that biggest thing about my essays is that I started early I did not wait I started brainstorming and like thinking about my essays like August last couple weeks of summer going into the school year because I was like I want to plan this early I love writing I consider myself a really good writer and I knew that I needed to like kill these essays especially with my low SAT score and my average grade I literally poured my heart into these essays I wrote multiple drafts of one of them the rest I kind of like had tinkered with ideas literally like edited them a ton had like my parents read them I had one of my friends read them and I had two like family friends read them and like edit them and give feedback and another one of my friends that like was already in college but I had people read it and I got feedback that's the biggest thing that I um, recommend with your essays um, is to really just read them and get feedback on them because other people will see things that you don't miss so I'm gonna kind of go over the topics that I talked about in my essays really quickly because I'm sure you guys are curious I had to write a total of five essays I had to write a common app essay and then four they're called PIQs but they're like short mini essays for the UCs. What was nice was I just chose like prompts 
to where like I could take one of my UC essays and extend it for my Common App essay. For my Common App essay, I chose one of the ones that was like, what is the biggest like barrier you faced in your life, personal or academic, like challenge that you faced and overcome. And I kind of talked about being a black Muslim and the only hijabi in like, like a very white community because my school is pretty white overall. Like it is a little diverse, but overall it is very overwhelmingly white, um, especially since I've, I've been to schools that were a lot more diverse. I used to live in San Diego and Chicago. And so kind of moving to this area, it's a very white area, very Republican area of California. So I kind of talked about that and I talked about overall my experiences as being a hijabi and all of that. And I wove in different aspects of my life, like my YouTube channel and just like a lot of just different things. I had a lot of personal anecdotes and things that I have um, talked about in the past. Um, some of the stuff I have touched on my YouTube channel, but I thought that was the best essay because I talked a lot about my identity and the, my passions and how that all kind of intersected and all that in my Common App essay. And then one of the UC essays was literally like, what is the challenge you faced or something like that? And I basically just took my UC essay and then extended it for my Common App essay and added another personal anecdote in there. And I thought my essay was pretty good. I mean, I only applied to one private school and it got me into Fordham. So that was my Common App essay and then that was the first UC essay that I did. The second UC essay was asking about your creativity and how you express creativity. So I talked about video creating and I talked about my YouTube channel in that essay and that's what I wrote for that. And then for another essay prompt, it was asking about an academic subject that you are passionate about or like that you further outside the classroom. So I talked about Spanish and my love for Spanish because I had taken five years of Spanish and I wanted to continue it in college. I still want to, um, I still want to take continue taking Spanish classes in college and one of my biggest dreams was to study abroad in Spain literally still is I would love to go to Spain so I kind of talked about all of that in that essay and then the fourth essay that I wrote for the UC school was asking about how you how you've bettered your community and your community involvement for this essay I talked about my volunteer work at the library because I volunteered at the library for four years all throughout high school and um, I volunteered for the teen advisory board there I ran a book club there I just did a lot of volunteering and tutoring there so I just kind of wrote about that especially since I love reading books so I kind of tied all of that together overall I felt like all my essays kind of interconnected one another so I really felt like my essays were a pretty good part like the strongest part of my application just a quick overview on my extracurriculars and what I did throughout high school um, I didn't do anything super crazy I didn't do any sports or anything like that I feel like my extracurriculars could have been a little bit stronger but at the same time no not everyone has super crazy extracurriculars because not everyone has the time for that like we're all trying to do well in high school and I feel like there's just so much pressure to not only be really good at school but then also have all these amazing things good for you outside of the classroom for volunteering I kind of talked about how I'm in this organization called Lions Heart I did that for four years I also talked about how I tutored a little bit for a California Scholarship Federation and National Honor Society I talked about my volunteering at the library being on the teen advisory board and running a book club the outside of school I talked about YouTube obviously that takes a lot of my time I talked about how I love reading and like I do a lot talk about my reading a lot on my channel and so reading and um, that is also another extra curricular that goes into obviously making my videos for clubs I talked about like two clubs that I was involved in I was involved all four years in this thing called JSA it's a national organization it's basically just this political debate club I talked about a club that I was involved in my sophomore and a little bit of my junior year and it was just basically basically a gun violence club and gun safety club and it was just kind of a raising awareness for that and that's pretty much it for clubs I literally had two clubs at the end of the day you don't need too much like too many clubs you don't want to be in like 10 clubs and like have no involvement both of those clubs I had some kind of leadership positions over the past four years mainly like my extracurricular were reading making videos um volunteering and that's pretty much it but like all those things like I feel like I put in a lot of time to each of those especially like you YouTube and stuff like that um so that I feel like like the time commitment was large oh I also talked about how I did have a, a job um because there is a section for that in that application obviously that's a time consumer if you have a job that literally takes a lot of time that you could be doing other things 
So definitely make sure if you have a job and you're spending a lot of hours there week to week that you include that in your application. The other stuff that is just kind of a little bit extra, obviously that I feel like came into consideration with my application were things like demographics. So obviously I am black, I'm Muslim, I am a first generation American, my parents immigrated here. So I put that on my application and they actually had an option for a first generation American student. I'm basically in my family, the first, like my parents didn't go to college in America. So they didn't go to school here even though they went to school in Africa. So I obviously put that down and like those were all aspects that like they put into consideration I'm assuming in your application and then obviously at the end they had like this section where I was like do you want to add anything else obviously didn't do that I know for the UCs and I think maybe the common app they do have a section where you can explain any reasons for any low dip in grades or like not having good grades in high school so if you got a bad grade or a grade you weren't proud of or whatnot you have the space to be able to explain that in your application that's basically everything I think that went into my application that is kind of my stats and whatnot that got me into school again i got into three schools got waitlisted at three and then got rejected from four and maybe it kind of makes sense as to why i got rejected from so many schools and things like that at the end of the day stats are definitely important they are kind of like the backbone but really the rest of your application is an opportunity to compensate if you have lower grades and or lower test scores if you guys have any other questions definitely let me know in the comment section down below my college reveal of where i'm going to be going to college is coming very very soon so get excited for that I know a lot of you guys commented on my last video college video trying to guess which school I'm going to it shouldn't be too hard because really I only got into three schools so that is all I have for today's video if you're not already subscribed I would love if you would subscribe down below it's free join the fam um, besides that I will see you guys in my next video bye